Hello everyone, Matt Groves here again. I'm going to show you some of the tooling that you can use to write .NET Core on Windows and for the most part this applies to Linux and Mac as well. So first I need .NET Core installed. I'll show you that I already have it installed by saying .NET dash dash version. If you don't have .NET Core installed, go to Microsoft and download it and install it. The link is in the video description and that should work again for Windows, Mac, and Linux. Since I have them installed already, I'm going to create a new .NET project. So I'm going to make a SRC folder here. And inside that folder, I'm going to say .NET new. And that's going to create a couple of files for a .NET Core project. The first one is program.cs. That's the source code. This is going to be a console app for now. And project.json, which specifies the dependencies. To restore those dependencies, just say .NET restore. It's going to take a second, but it's going to get those dependencies that it needs to compile and run that program. Next, I've installed Visual Studio Code. It's a lightweight text editor from Microsoft built on the Atom framework. You can use the editor of your choice, or even just use Notepad if you want. But to open this in Visual Studio Code, I'm going to say code and then dot, meaning current folder. And that's going to bring up Visual Studio Code. Now once I'm in Visual Studio Code, I can bring up the integrated terminal with control backtick, or I can do it via the menu. Now I can run commands right from Visual Studio Console or Visual Studio Code. Or you can use a separate command or PowerShell window if you want, you know, whatever, whatever you like to do. From this console, to run the program, I'll just say .NET run. And you can see it's doing some compiling, and there's no errors, and it just prints out the hello world message. So I'll bring up uh, program.cs here. You can see that all it's doing is a console write line hello world. Now note that we have some nice syntax highlighting and other things uh, for C Sharp here, because I have an extension for C Sharp installed called C Sharp for Visual Studio Code. And Visual Studio Code will often recommend extensions for you based on what you're doing. I've got some other ones installed here. So we're going to do something with a third party now. It's going to be a little more interesting. I'm going to set up this console app to talk to Couchbase Server. And if you don't have Couchbase Server installed, check out some of my other videos and blog posts at blog.couchbase.com. So another extension I have in here is a NuGet extension called the .NET Core Project Manager. To use it, I'll just go back here and I'll say Control P, and this brings up the Go To File prompt, and I can enter a greater than symbol here to get a list of commands, which is known as the Command Palette. You can also just say Control Shift P to bring up the Command Palette directly, whichever one you find easier. So I'll start typing NuGet here. You can see I have two commands available, add new package and remove package. I'll go ahead and add a new package. And you can just type in Couchbase or whatever you like. Uh, I, I know for a fact that it's called Couchbase Net Client, so I'm going to enter that and do a search. It's going to give me a list of suggestions here. So let's go down and find Couchbase Net Client and press enter. And now it's going to give me a list of versions to choose from. The .NET Core SDK is currently in Developer Preview, so that's what DP means. So I'm going to say Developer Preview 2, the latest one as of this recording. And it's going to go ahead and modify the project JSON file. So you could do that by hand if you want to. And it's going to say, well, you've added a new dependency. Why don't you go ahead and restore dependencies now? And so I'll go ahead and do that. And you can see that it's made changes to my project JSON file adding Couchbase Net Client right here. Okay, so now I'm going to write some code that actually uses Couchbase. So if you've uh, done this before, it's going to be very similar to what you've seen, but this will give me a chance to show some of the features of the Visual Studio Code as well as the C-Sharp extension. So I can say cluster helper, and it doesn't find that one because I haven't included the namespace yet. So I'll just click on this light bulb here and it'll add the using Couchbase namespace here. I'll say initialize and then new client configuration. Configuration. And it can't find that either. So again, light bulb, put the correct namespace in there. 
and then I know that I have to spell, tell it which servers to find the Couchbase nodes. So I'll give it a list of URIs and just your standard Couchbase installation installed locally. And now it's complaining about list. So I add that namespace here. And then I'll say, now that I've connected to the cluster, give me a, access to a bucket. So I've created a bucket already called default, which by the way has a primary index already on it. And if you're not familiar with that, uh, again, please go back and watch some of my other videos and blog posts to get comfortable with uh, creating a Couchbase installation and creating a bucket with an index. Okay, so once I have a bucket, I'll go ahead and just create a, a new document and put it in the bucket. So I'll create a, a document of dynamic just to keep things easy. I'll give it a key, which is known as an ID here, and I'm just going to generate a new GUID, and I will give it the actual document, it'll be an anonymous object, and let's put some interesting things in here. So I can say invoice number uh, equals, and one of the ways I like to get random strings is using .NET Framework path, so I'll include that with system IO, and there's a method there called get random file name. It's a great way to get random strings. Uh, next thing I want to do is get a random amount due, so I'll say amount due is new random, and I'll say uh, next, uh, just say next, somewhere between ten and a thousand dollars seems reasonable, and I'll put a type on here of, let's say, electric underscore bill. So I'm typing my documents uh, by just using a, a type field there. Okay, and once I have that document instantiated, I'll say bucket insert doc. So at this point now, I have created a electric bill and inserted it into the default bucket. So the next thing I want to do is just get a list of all the electric bills out of the bucket and display them to the screen. It will probably only be one to start with, but after each time we run this program, it'll add a new uh, electric bill to the bucket. So let's create a nickel query. So I'll say query equals query request, I believe, and it's going to want the Couchbase nickel namespace for that. So we got uh, some namespaces here starting to stack up. And I'll say create. And here I'll enter a nickel query, so uh, b.star from default, and I'll alias that as b, where b.type equals, now I could just say electric bill here and sort of hard code it, but I'm going to show parameterization and say dollar sign one, and then query.add positional parameter, and I'll put electric bill in there for that parameter. I'll also, while I'm at it, set the scan consistency to be uh, scan consistency dot request plus. If you're not familiar with that, please go back and look at some of my blog posts on scan consistency. And then I'll go ahead and execute the query by saying result equals bucket dot query. And I'll make that dynamic just to keep things easy so I don't have to create any other types. And query into there. Now if you're using developer preview 2 like I am today, you can just ignore this green squiggle here. It's a mistake that will be corrected in the next release of the .NET Core SDK, so just ignore that. So now I have a result. Let's write out to console what actually happened. Was it successful? And I can say result.success. So that will be a true or a false, because that is a Boolean there. Okay, and then I can say if it wasn't successful, I want to find out what happened. So I'll print out some error information. For instance, I can say uh, there was a message, maybe with the result. Um, I can write out that there was an exception with the result. So I can say result.exception if there was one. And then I want to get the type of exception and the name of that type. And then I can also get out the exception message. Again, if there was one, because there may not be result question mark dot, which is a new C-sharp operator to avoid any null reference exceptions there. And then the result also contains a list of errors. So I'll just loop through those with a for each here and say for each error 
write to console an error, and then each of those errors may have a message in them, so I'll print those out to the screen. And then since this was a failure, I'll go ahead and return right here. And let's add uh, a right line for some spacing. And then finally, I'm going to write out all the bills. So at this point, we know the query was successful. So let's print all the bills to the screen. So I will just add some nice little formatting here. And then, oh, now we're going to loop. And we'll say for each bill in results.rows. It says rows, even though I think of it as documents. And then I will just write line. I'm going to use the string interpolation operator, also new to C Sharp 6, to say, uh, give me the uh, invoice number of the bill, and also display the amount due in the bill. And I'm going to use two strings C even though I think I can use uh, string interpolation to do that formatting. I don't have to use toString, but we'll just keep that simple for now. Okay, so then if we go back to control backtick, control backtick, I can say .net and run. It's going to recompile it because there's been some changes. And you can see that I've inserted one bill, and there it is with a random amount. So if I run it again, I should see two bills show up in the list, and I do. Let's see what happens if there's an error. So I'll change this nickel query to say default x, which is a bucket I know does not exist. I'll say .NET run. And you can see that the error message here is that key space was not found, default x. There's no bucket named default x, which is correct, so I'll fix this. Now, the first part still ran successfully, so there's currently three documents, three electric bill documents in there. So if I run this again, we should see four total. The full source code for this example is available on GitHub. The link is in the description of the video. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, comments, leave a comment below or ping me on Twitter. I'm M. Groves.